This is Matthias Fritsch. I'm a visual artist, filmmaker. And he's also the accidental creator of a huge global internet phenomenon. What's a good point to start the story? Well, the Techno Viking story is pretty old. Started um, almost 16 years ago. And what happened to his video really captures how the future of the things that you put online could be beyond your imagination. In July 2000, here in Berlin, an insanely popular event called the Love Parade is about to take place. And not everyone is thrilled. By the year 2000, it already attracted one and a half million tourists. It came to Berlin to celebrate techno culture, but in a quite annoying way. So they sprayed their hair, whistled like crazy, drank a lot of alcohol, which was not so cool in this techno scene where they used much more chemical drugs, party drugs. So some people from the original underground scene started a counter parade at the same time. First they called it the hate parade and then later it was called the fuck parade. Fritsch was just getting into short experimental films. I was also pretty much affected by the Dogma 95 movement from Denmark. You just uh, go straight to the scene and, and start shooting. So he went to do some filming at the counter parade. And then I saw an uh, interesting crowd dancing, so I went there sat down on, on the back of a truck and uh, started recording. And what happened in the next four minutes will become very, very internet famous. And if you don't know the video, here's a recap with some director's commentary. This whole four minute sequence has kind of a, a narrative flow. You start with an opening scene, you just get an orientation that you're on the street. People are obviously during the day dancing to club music. Suddenly a guy crashes into a woman at the center of the frame. Which is followed by like a comic character, like a superhero actually, stepping into the, the picture, kind of controlling the situation that nothing can happen, nothing violent anymore. The guy is topless, muscly and, well, he looks like a Viking. The reason why he's masked out here will become clear in a minute. The person which is filmed from a low angle looks super dominant. And then the truck that I was sitting with my camera on starts moving slowly and everybody is following the camera basically. And then all of a sudden like a crazy dance appears. So you see like a dance that you've never seen before, like super energetic, super fast and uh, like a very individual style. And you think like, wow, what, what the fuck is going on here? And this is uh, all of a sudden. And there was no edit so far. So you don't know what, is this real? Does somebody like this exists in reality? Is it fake? It can't be really real, but on the other hand, who can invent something like that? I was pretty much interested in perception and um, I decided to, to make it an art video that I framed with this question, is this real or is it set up? Fritsch labels the video Nikam number one because it's shot from knee level and he shows it in a couple of small local filmmaker gatherings. I immediately got the reaction that everybody wanted to see it again and again. And in 2001, he uploads it to his DIY homemade website. But nobody knew that it was online or just a couple of people like friends of mine. Most people still connect to the internet like this, and online video and social media are not really a thing. So for the next six years, not much is happening, until 2007. Then I started to upload a couple of my videos into my YouTube channel. First, there was nothing going on, and then in fall of 2007, so when this video was already seven years old, it kind of started to, to raise slowly like this exponential curve. So from a couple of hundreds, then all of a sudden to like 4,000, then, then it was more than 10,000 clicks. And some days after that, all of a sudden I get an email from somebody that tells me that my video all of a sudden got two million hits overnight, which I wasn't aware because that was happening on uh, break.com, which is another video platform. It was only later that Fritsch managed to pin down the exact sequence of events for how the video caught on. It started with a link on a porn site under the name Tor. Somebody put a link to my video in like the funny video section. From there it went to a discussion board. Like a forum where, where memes were created. It was called The Forum. This is also where it got its title. The labeling of, of this video is a big big part in its viral success. And from there to break.com. And this is where it hit the, the critical mass. At this point, it's hard to say how many people watched the original video. Between freebooted versions and across platforms, it's probably not less than 100 million. But the original version was just the beginning. GIFs and memes were not new to the internet, but this thing seemed like it was turned up to 11. Remixes, t-shirts, sculptures, action figures and tributes. Lots and lots of tributes recreating the scene down to the last detail. Meanwhile, for Fritsch, things are looking up. 
He starts collecting and documenting all the references. It became some sort of reflective art project on its own, the Techno Viking archive. He gets invited to give talks all around the world. It became part of my artistic practice also to talk about this kind of things. And at some point, he gets an automated email from YouTube asking if he would like to put ads on his video and get paid. And if you study art, of course, you know that 95% uh, or more of all the art students, they will never make it in the art system. So I didn't like the commercial aspects, but on the other hand, it sounded like an, like an option to kind of uh, keep me going. Meanwhile, he's also trying to find the protagonist of his video already since 2001. I also started calling fitness studios if they have seen him, because I thought that he would, would be, like, a, from his appearance, he must be working out somehow. I, I even kept, like, half of this money, because I thought, sooner or later, he has to contact me. And he never finds him. But now, the internet also wants to know. And a couple of people step forward. For a while, I, I even thought to myself that he's a, a bodybuilder that was captured in a, in a TV show of Stefan Raab, like a very popular comedy show. But also, this turned out to be a complete fake. The, the real guy never stepped up. So everything you find about uh, Techno Vikings identity is not true. And you might wonder, how can Fitch be so sure? I mean, I, I know who sued me, so I know the name and I know an address. That's right. In 2009, Fritsch receives a letter from a lawyer asking him to basically remove the entire thing off the internet. And by that point, it was more than two years that there was this global phenomenon. And there were hundreds and thousands of copies already out there. This kicks off a long legal battle that would last several years. And I could never, unfortunately, talk in person. I asked his lawyer many times. The guy himself doesn't show up in court, but he's represented by his lawyer. Fritsch ends up having to pay all he's earned from the video, about 10,000 euros, plus 13,000 euros in legal fees. Which put me into debt. I make this in two years as an artist, with, with the art that I'm doing. The parade came from Hackerscher Markt, down the street, and um, I came from the Weimarsstraße. The truck was standing here. It still isn't absolutely clear what was the motive for the lawsuit. Was it just about the money? Or maybe the guy is so disconnected from the online world that he thought he could actually make his internet fame disappear. Whenever I research in the internet if there's any hint on his real identity, He's still totally out of the web. The lawsuit obviously brought new attention to the old meme. And still, the guy manages to remain anonymous, which is absolutely amazing. For the phenomenon of techno-viking, I think it's uh, great, because it continues to have this myth. He, he continues to be as strong as he was in 2000. He doesn't get old. He doesn't lose his face because of a stupid talk show that he might appear. But it also shows that, obviously, he really doesn't want to be in the limelight. If there is anything this story really shows is how random internet fame is and how little you can control it. But still, there is this one obvious question that comes to mind. And just so you know, I did ask it. So why is the techno Viking video viral? Maybe, Fritsch says, it's about having a weird and unlikely mixture of things that somehow work well together. So, for instance, in this video you have uh, techno culture and uh, Viking. Like, uh, something that is ancient and something that is very contemporary. You have uh, the aesthetics of uh, YouTube videos, like this shaky camera, and you have something very filmic, like the controlled camera together. But then again, maybe it's all just one big random confusion. In the beginning, if I looked at the comments, people were pretty much confused, like, what the fuck is this? And I don't understand anything. And then once you have a critical mass, then people start to rethink, Okay, I, I don't understand anything, but like a million other people, they must have understood it, so it, it must be me, it's, it's not <laughs> the, the, the video. Fritsch has documented this story in an independent, full-feature documentary, The Story of Techno Viking, which you should totally watch.